Hey, thank you for checking out this video on the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel. My name is Gwen. I'm a cloud developer advocate here at Microsoft. And the following is taken from a live stream that I did with Kevin Oliver, a machine learning engineer at the Octavian Group. Kevin has extensive experience with Bicep, which is an infrastructure as code tool for Microsoft Azure. And we're about to dive into a conversation on Bicep, tooling, parameter files, loops, and a bunch more tips and tricks that he's picked up along his way working with Bicep. The link to the entire live stream will be in the description, so be sure to check that out. Let's dive right in. Yes, so there was one last piece I wanted to show as far as um, features to uh, help you create your... Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> as ways to help you mm -hmm. uh, extend your uh, Bicep template. So in the background here, I'm just going to go ahead and create a network security group and we're going to ingest that from our bicep file because uh no one wants to have to create all those rules by hand All right. So what we're going to be doing, and while this is deploying, is we're going to be using a feature in Bicep for inserting resources that are created out in Azure. So not all the time you know all the properties you're going to want to put into a resource, or you've never worked with a certain resource before. So instead of maybe having to fumble through you know, the API documentation or trying to work it out from inside of Bicep, um, you can go ahead and create that resource in the portal and then import it into Azure or into your Bicep template and understand some of the properties that are there. So to do this, I'm just going to grab my resource ID from the portal. And with inside of Bicep, we're going to do Control Shift P. And we're going to choose this Bicep insert resource option. And we're going to choose our virtual network file. And then we're going to part pass in the uh, resource ID that we're going to want it to ingest. And what this is going to do is going to have, it's going to go out and try and generate the resource from a from whatever wow. was created inside of Azure. Very cool. So now I've got a great template to start with. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and um, see my rules are already kicking in, telling me that this is not good. So we can go ahead and update this and add our location. And uh, everything has intelligence, which is fantastic. So you know whether you're looking for your parameters, your variables, um, you can always find those very quickly. And I'm going to, since I don't want to have to type out these rules, um, we're going to create one more file to get those added for us. MSG. We're going to create a new JSON file, and we're going to bring in a set of rules that we we'll want our resource or our network security group to deploy. So again, we're creating a uh, array of security rules, mm -hmm. and we're passing in just two rules right now to be applied. Um, but instead of having to import those uh, ourselves, we're going to go ahead and add some variables to do that for us. So I've created a network, uh, an NSG security rules variable, and we're going to use a pair of special functions to pull in our, our values for us. So the load text context function is going to go out and read this JSON file and import all the information for it and turn it into a variable that we can use uh, in place of the security rules uh, array below. As you can see, all the information that's in that file is now in this uh, variable. So instead of having to type that all out, I can come down here and I can do NSG security rules, and I'm done. Uh, I, if I need to create special, if I need to have a base set of rules, and then I want to create special rules for this deployment, I can do that here, and I can concat those together if I had two sets. Um, or if it's just to keep it out of your bicep file, you can have this JSON file 
holding all of your rules uh, and just pass it in into one variable. Uh, it really makes everything a lot cleaner um, rather than having that big block of text in the middle of your resource and cluttering up the file, having that out in its own file, which can be easily updated as well, um, allows you to keep, again, your your, your BICEP file very modular and very generalized to be used across multiple um, multiple deployments. We're also gonna update the industry rule here. Yeah, that's way cleaner than what I've seen. Like, you know, having to individually add the network security, like individually reference the network security rules in the BICEP right. file. And it works well for, for firewall rules or any mm -hmm. any large block of text. Um, I've heard people, I believe, use it for logic apps as well. I believe some of those uh, rules that come out of there are in a big block of JSON. Um, there are some limitations to it. You have to be careful that JSON file can only grow to a certain size. Uh, I, do not, I do not know off the top of my head, but I know it's out in the uh, BICEP documentation. So please go check that out to um, verify how big that file can get. because. Uh, at the end of the day, what's happening if we build our BICEP file and we look at our JSON, that big block of text is being added into, um, oh, and see, this is I, th this is why, <laughs> if I had had to do just ARM templates before, it would have been insane. <laughs> um, but here, if we look at our variable, all it's doing is importing that big block of text in there for us, but we don't have to do it. It's abstracted away. We know it's there, we know it's something that we have to pass in, but we're only having to work with this variable name. So it makes uh, massive our, our massive difference. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And yes, if we were to deploy this again, we can see we have a our validation. We do our what if, we should get a new uh, network security group that's gonna get mm -hmm. deployed or updated with those two new rules. So yeah, now I, <laughs> I've realized that it's all about understanding what, like taking advantage of the different, um, what are they called, functions? Yeah, different uh, yeah. functions that, and, and just built-in mm -hmm. tooling that's there, right? You yeah. know, a lot of this is, is spread across multiple tools, but the, um, the efficiency that the BICEP tooling that's provided to you lets you create variables and bring in other resources to get what you need without having to write big blocks of code all over the place. Yeah. Makes your code just that much cleaner and that much faster to write. Uh, if I need to go out, again, the, the, the import resource option is fantastic mm -hmm. to have a new resource you've never worked with and be able to go out and configure it and get some values in to start with. It saves you a huge amount of time. Definitely. Um, now, definitely, I would say a caveat to that is uh, the insert resource will try its best to create the BICEP for, file for you. It's probably not going to do a best practice. It's going to do a lot of statically th set things, but it will give mm -hmm. you a starting point to be able to start creating that resource and making it more efficient for your deployments. So, yeah, we can see here we've got our two new rules that are getting created for us into our network security group. And uh, we could deploy those to Azure and we'd be all set. That we've got some updated templates that can be reused across some multiple deployments and uh, easier for people to review and read and understand going forward and uh, hopefully easier to extend as well.